Welcome to Jazz Time. Jazz Time is an online store that buys, sells, and trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so our customers can easily choose the best watch for themselves in the comfort of their own home. If you like this watch and would like to purchase it at the lowest price anywhere online, click the link in the description below to buy it at jazztime.com. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Richard Mill RM65 Split Second in Carbon TPT. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the history of the 6501 and then I'll tell you where this watch stands in the lineup of similar current models of Richard Mill. Then I'll tell you about the bezel, dial, case, bracelet and finally try it on and give you my thoughts. So let's start with that history of the RM6501. It's Richard Mill's most complicated automatic movement. Now make sure you hear those words correctly. It's the most complicated automatic movement. Now, they make more complicated manual wind movements, but it's their most complicated automatic movements, meaning you don't have to do any winding at all. It winds using the rotor on the back, which we'll get to talk about in a moment when we talk about the movement. So, it's the most complicated one of that. It came out approximately 2020, and now being 2024, it's been out for quite some time now. And it's one of their most coveted pieces, and rightfully so, because, first of all, you don't see a lot of Carbon TPT watches, and if you just look at it, you'll see this thing is exquisite. So, really, that's the reason. Well, anyways, we'll get to why it's such a coveted piece in just a little bit when we get into it. But now, where does it stand in the lineup of similar RMs currently in production? Well, at the moment, RM is only making five collections of watches that are a part of their baseline, which means they're not limited edition and that most people can buy them at one point or another. You'll still, you know, have to get on a waiting list. You still have to have a purchase history, etc. But at least you'll be able to get it and it won't be a million dollars. So what are they? They start with the 6701, which is the skinnier one. Then they start with the 6702, which is the more sporty version of the 6501. That's the two. Then there's the RM30, which is actually now the RM3001. That's the successor to the very famous RM30, which is a medium size. Both of the other ones I told you were smaller. The fourth one, which is a smaller size as well, more close to the 6701, except it's a chronograph, kind of like that in the sense, and that it's the same size, and that you have the bigger one, which is what you got here, which is the larger one, and it's actually larger than the RM30, and that is the 6501. And that is the largest of the base models that RM produces. And the reason is because it has all of these extra pushers on the left and the right, which we will go through in just a little bit. So that's where it stands in the lineup. And of the 6501, which is what you're looking at right now, this is the split seconds, which is what you're looking at. It has several variations. So there's titanium, rose gold, carbon TPT right here. And they also make it in gray carbon. It's either gray quartz or gray carbon, something like that, something close. It's gray. It's gray. But anyways, they don't make a lot of these variations, and in my opinion, and the market, the black one really is the best. The color combination really looks amazing on this. Okay, and that's where this watch stands. And in order to actually buy one of these from RM, you really have to have quite a large purchase history you would have have to have bought probably four pieces or more and you have to actually keep them so it's not an easy watch to get all right now let's move on from that and let's talk about the actual case now the case here is carbon tpt now what they do in carbon tpt is they layer on carbon strands at different angles and i think it's something like 45 degrees something like that in order so that they can maintain the strength and durability of the case and carbon tpt is one of the strongest and lightest materials that you could possibly use now people started or brands started using titanium because it is also very lightweight and very strong. Rolex has done their yacht masters and many brands have followed suit. Like Audemars Piguet, they use a lot of titanium. It has its advantages, but carbon TPT is even like one step further above titanium. It is notoriously difficult to work with, 
but it does have its advantages. It's lightweight and it's very strong. And an interesting thing is that when you use Carbon TPT, the fingerprint or sort of the wave that you get here, it's unique. And now let's move on from that. Well, so actually, since we're talking about the case here, we should probably talk about the dimensions. This is the largest of the base models of RM. Now, before we actually talk about the turbolons and all this other crazy stuff, let's get out to like a million dollars. No, we're not talking about that. This watch retails for about 370k USD. And you can get it for a little bit less than that at jazztime.com, depending on the year. If you want a newer one, it's going to be a bit more expensive, naturally. But at any rate, let's talk about this case. And the dimensions are 50 millimeters going from top to bottom, 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. And now, that might sound big, but it's actually not that big at all. By comparison, I believe the deep sea might be from lug to lug. I think it's bigger than that, like 52. And so we're going from 12 to six. It's not that large. It is large. I will not downgrade that, but it's not that large. The Audemars Piguet, by the way, the Royal Oak is 43 which is one of their top offshores. But that in total is like 50, 53 millimeters from lug to lug. And that's going from left to right. Okay, and then going from left to right, because this is a tonneau shape, which means rectangle, probably, in French or something, uh, then you will have a left to right, meaning three to nine dimensions, which is 44.5 also, which is large, but not overly large. Generally, on a sports watch, you don't want to have more than 44 millimeters. This one is 44.5, which it's within the range. And then the height, which is a very important number, it's the thickness of the watch itself, and it's actually going to be only 16 millimeters. Now, considering what this watch is, it has a ton of complications, which we'll get into in a little bit when we talk about the movement. 16 millimeters is not that big. By comparison, a deep sea is 16 millimeters, and literally that only tells you the time and date. This one does way more than that, and they mask the height by putting these pushers on both the left and the right hand side so that it doesn't look like an empty wall. On the left, high, on the left side, the, the 7 to 11 side, there's another two pushers, which makes the two pushers on the left side balance out the two on the right, and that makes the watch look very balanced, in my opinion. Okay, and now the case. By the way, the, the case, so you would think that they do the entire case in carbon, right? But they actually only do the top plate and the back plate in carbon. If you look at the sides, they are also a carbon, but they don't have that sort of signature weave to it. And they do that to make sure that the entirety of the watch is made of carbon and to keep it super light. It's black, it doesn't look like it's carbon on the front, but it is still that carbon TPT. Okay, all right, now let's move on. That's the case. By the way, one of the ways that you could recognize this as it is the larger case is that if you're going to look at the one o'clock to four o'clock, these four screws are supposed to be smaller than the ones like on the 72 or the 67, which only have two screws from the one o'clock to the five o'clock. And the two screws at the bottom, they are what hold the bracelet, which I wouldn't count those. Okay, so obviously, if you want a larger watch, you can fit four screws in it. If it's smaller, I mean, you can only fit two. I mean, that's just how watches work. So anyways, that is the case. Let's move on. And I guess while we're right here, let's talk about the bezel. Now, well, we've kind of already talked about that. So let's move on to the movement because that is really interesting. Now, first I'll say the watch has a split second, which I'll show you how to use it in just a minute. But it also has, what else does it have? A split second complication. It has the date in the upper left hand corner in green. It has a function selector at the bottom right hand corner, which you can select. And it also has a variable geometry rotor, which is on the back, meaning that you could change how easily the watch winds by movement, the placement of the weights within the rotor, either up or down. Down being for less active, if you move it up, it's going to be more active. And so that tells us quite a bit about it, actually. And, oh, I forgot, and it also has a fast wind on the bottom left-hand corner. I've never actually seen a watch with a fast wind on it, but this one actually has it on the bottom left-hand corner. It has a fast wind, and that really comes in handy if you're trying to wind the watch and you haven't worn it in a while. 
Most watches, you have to use the wind on the crown, but RM, they have figured out a revolutionary way to do that, which is this wind. So let's go ahead and start testing this watch out. Let's start with the wind, I guess. Okay, so let's just say this watch has been sitting down for some time and I need to wind it. One of the ways that you can do that is you press the bottom right hand button right here. And I actually used it many times myself when I had this watch and I just press the bottom right hand button and press it as many times as you need to. I press like 20, 30 times and it'll just wind up the watch. Another way you could do that is the traditional crowned wine. So how do you get this function selector in the bottom right hand corner? You press the little button on the crown. When I first got this watch, I actually didn't know how to do that. I had to watch a YouTube video on how to do that because I couldn't figure it out. And so that's another benefit of watching this video. So simply press the little button on the crown that you see here, that indicator, and it starts on the wind, which actually, if you just turn the crown, it'll wind it and it is a position of zero. If you press it once, it'll pop up to H, sorry, D, it'll pop up to D. It's like the function selector of a gearbox. D stands for date. And then when it's on that position, you can turn the crown or don't pull the crown. You turn the crown and the date will change. And since this is a skeletonized dial, you can actually see the date wheel in the back revolving, which is very cool if you ask me. If you then press that button on the crown once again, it then goes to H. H stands for hour. And you can then change the time by simply moving the crown. Once you're done with that, you can return it back to its normal position by pressing the crown inward one more time, and then it drops back down to W. And that's how you use the function selector, and now let's use the split second. Now you see, right now in its neutral position, you'll see only one blue second hand. Now I'll start the counter by pressing the upper right hand corner. That's traditionally how you would start a chronograph, and it'll start moving and going through. And then at some point, if I want to test, let's say I have two cars going down a racetrack and I'm calculating the elapsed time. I will, let's say the first car passes some marked point and I want to see how far behind that second car is. I would then press the button in the upper left hand corner and that would allow it to, well, when I press it, boom, it stops the blue and allows the orange hand that is underneath to continue moving which is a pretty cool thing because you can calculate elapsed time of two different objects. And then if you want to restart anything, you just press the bottom button that says reset. And it can calculate the elapsed time of two different vehicles, for example, but most of us are probably not calculating race cars around a racetrack. So for me, I will just leave this running and it looks really cool and I'll keep the second hands. So it looks like it has all these hands and I mean, the watch looks like it's full of life. It has all of these crazy colors like a race car. And then it has all of these different hands moving around. By the way, as the second hand goes around the subdial on that right hand side, which has a 30 minute marker, it moves around as well. And then for every time it goes around that twice on the right hand side, the left hand side moves over one tick. It's a 12 hour counter. So you actually, actually no, most, most split seconds, by the way, if you look at Patek Philippe or Audemars PGA, when they make a split second, they almost always make a split second in only 30 minutes. I don't know why they actually put, it's, it's really lame that to me to make a split second for only 30 minutes, because how many things do you're going to calculate that are much more than 30 minutes, such as a full car race, right? You might want to calculate that. For example, the Le Mans race is actually a 24-hour race, but this is 12. Or you might want to calculate some other race or some other event that is longer than a simple 30 minutes. But RM really has done a good job with this chronograph by making it a 12-hour chronograph, not just a 30-minute one, which, in my opinion, makes this way more useful than its competitors. And of course, on the upper left hand corner has the date. Not only can you use this watch every day, you can calculate a bunch of elapsed time over things that, you know, a useful calculation of time. You can also personalize the watch by changing the variable geometry rotor in the back. You can't do that yourself. You have to take it to a watchmaker, the uh, Richard Mill watchmaker, of course. The watch is also very legible with these huge yellow hour and minute hands. 
And then on top of that, if you always leave the second hand running, the watch is always going to look like it's a race car. It is going to look like it's moving around all the time. And then combine that with its carbon TPT that is super duper light. And not only is the front made of carbon TPT, but the sides and everything else. Now, for example, on the rose gold, what they do is they put a faceplate on it with rose gold, but then the body is actually made of titanium to keep it pretty light. But in this case, since carbon TPT is actually even lighter than titanium and stronger, they don't need to do that. So then you can make an entire watch of this black carbon TPT, which keeps this watch. I just wish you guys could feel this. It is so incredibly light. It's so very comfortable. Okay, um, that's enough with the movement. Let's move on to the bracelet. The bracelet is your standard RM bracelet with this titanium, I guess you could call it a deployment buckle. You simply pull it up on, okay? It is very comfortable, very easy to put the watch on and off. And another side note is that the strap on this RM has gone with double vents, meaning two vents, one on each side. They almost always go with double vents now. Before, on the older models, they would only do a single vent, which in my opinion is not that good. Now, with this double vent, it looks much better. It looks much more sporty, which is kind of what RM is a sports watch. That's what they're going for. For me, this is purely a sports watch or baller watch, but... Anyways, they make it with this double vent, which looks really cool, and you can change that strap. So, for example, if you want to change that black strap with an accent of red or white or red accents with a white strap, blue strap, green, whatever, you can swap it out. And they make a lot of cool straps to make this watch really stand out. And that's really it for the strap and the buckle. I've already talked about the movement, so I guess that brings us to the end there's actually a lot of things I want to talk to you about the base plate. It being a sandblasted with PVD and then having a bunch of cool rhodium plated beveled wheels and so on. But that stuff is really all actually on RM's website and I really don't want to bore you with all of that. So I've given you the overview here, which is probably why you're watching the video in the first place, trying to decide whether or not if this is the watch for you. And of course, by the way, if you do want to buy it, please go to jazztime.com or click the link in the description below to buy it quite literally at the lowest price anywhere you could find online. Okay, time to try this watch on my wrist and give you my final thoughts. So I've gone through it. I've kind of shown you how to use it and why this watch is so cool. And I want to say that the RM6501 Carbon TPT Black, which is what you're looking at right here in my hands, is actually my favorite in line, in production RM base model. I know it's hard to call these a base model but as i said it's my favorite core collection of current rms in 2024 why because it's the most complicated it is the most sought after and just keep in mind during the watch craze of 2021 this watch was going for like seven hundred fifty thousand dollars now thankfully of course those days have come and gone but that just tells you what kind of premium this watch was commanding it was impossible absolutely impossible for anyone to get this and they're trading on secondary markets so for crazy crazy numbers they have come down and that's because people can actually own them i mean Think about it. I think most people will not pay $700,000 for a watch, even if they could. I mean, I'm not sure they would. And really, this watch being around the mid 300s or high 300s, it's really already very expensive for most people. Anyways, this is my favorite RM currently. It looks every little bit of RM. And to me, it's the spirit of RM. RM means of Richard Mill, of course. It's that kind of racing machine on your wrist, which is really their slogan. And to be a racing machine, you have to be lightweight. You have to be cutting edge, the best of the best, very innovative. And that's everything encapsulated right here in this watch. The reason I really don't like it in gold, for example, or other materials is because, I mean, for gold, 
I mean, what does that have to do with racing at all? Nothing. And it makes it heavy, which is the opposite of what you need for racing. So I don't really like that. But Carbon TPT and no other brand really... There are other brands that do Carbon TPT, but no one does it like RM. And so to make a watch that's super complicated, super comfortable to wear, has tons of different little functions to it, on the very innovating, cutting edge that it is, it's really number one in my book. So look, that's my final thoughts on this. If you like this watch and would like to purchase it quite literally at the lowest prices you could find online, click the link in the description below and buy it at jazztime.com. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount, so you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in Jazztime, plus the brand, model and the details you're interested in and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.